welcome to integrating Copilot into SharePoint and Viva Connections. I'm CJ Tan, I'm a group product manager uh, working on SharePoint and OneDrive and introducing new Copilot experiences. And I'm here with Luca, Mark, and Chris. Hi everybody, my name is Luca Bandinelli. I am a PM in the OneDrive and SharePoint team that takes care of developer and extensibility. Hey everyone, Mark Wendell, also a product manager working at Microsoft in the OneDrive and SharePoint organization, uh, working on SharePoint Embedded. My name is Chris Witten. I'm a director of engineering for Microsoft Copilot Studio. All right, we've got lots of great content and demos to share with you today. Um, so we're gonna get going and trying to get through everything. If there's time for questions, we'll try and take some at the end, but let's get started. Uh, first with Copilots and SharePoint. So I'm gonna introduce a set of new capabilities I like to call Click to Copilot. And this is because we're trying to make it really easy for you to create and extend Copilots that help you and your team right within SharePoint. So with zero code, you'll be able to um, soon create these custom co-pilots from SharePoint. This is a cap capability that we're targeting all users in your organization and not just administrators or developers. So why SharePoint? So SharePoint is where we, we know that you're storing your organizational knowledge, not just things that are recent and current that you want authoritative um, authority on when you share them, but also things that you collaborate with your team on. So these are the assets that you create together. So with this, we wanna be able to introduce custom co-pilots here so that you can help yourself and your team with a specific purpose. So basically take Microsoft Chat, all of that power, scope it down to a site or a set of documents or a folder or your document library and create something that you can use over and over again to help your team. And this we wanna do without any specialized skills or technical skills, because really you know what the content is, you know who you're working with, and you know what you need to get done to do that. So this is called Click to Copilot to try and um, express how easy it's going to be. It's going to be easy to create, it's gonna be simple to use, and it's gonna save you time, because you're gonna get the right help that you need from this Copilot that you create. But of course, you know, if you're creating something, does it actually something that's helpful? Like, is it gonna get used? That's really the important thing. So we're introducing a couple ways that you can actually interact with these custom co-pilots. First, it's around interacting with them on SharePoint. So what you see on the left here is an, a new entry point for co-pilot on a SharePoint site. When you open that, it's got this switcher that lets you pick the co-pilots that have been created for that site. Now this is all site owner controlled, so you can pick a uh, default copilot, so something that you would like people to interact with when they come to your site. And then you can introduce all these other custom copilots that you've created for purpose-built um, functionality for the people that come to visit. This will also be a place where we think that when you're creating your own copilots, we'll show it here. So this is something that we're introducing now, but there's lots of time for feedback. So we're gonna be inviting lots of um, customer feedback as we introduce this product as well. What you see on, your, on the right-hand side is how you would interact with this in Teams. So we're gonna give you an easy way to share this copilot that you created with, uh, within a group chat or within a one-on-one -on -one chat as well. So let's get to the two main scenarios here that will introduce custom copilots from SharePoint. The first one is around having this built-in copilot for every SharePoint site that you have. One that will introduce on your existing sites and also allow you to add whenever you create a new site. And then the other entry point is really about starting from the content, selecting the content that you want to ground your copilot, um, and then building the customizations out from then. So they've got two different starting points, but they really have the same functionality. Both of these, as I'll show you, can be customized. You'll be able to share this copilot with others um, through Teams and email. And the copilot itself is going to respond back with the permissions of the person who's asking. So that's going to be using your permissions in the same way that Microsoft Chat does. The one thing that's different here is that the scenario where we've got the default copilot or that built-in copilot on your SharePoint site, you're gonna have some site owner controls around that as well. So let's move on to the demo. So we're gonna start first with looking at the built-in copilot site as a starting point for these customizations. So within a SharePoint site, you're going to see um, that panel come out with the copilot button and there's gonna be a menu that allows you to edit. And we're gonna to jump to the demo here. So when you see that built-in copilot, it's gonna start with the name of the site and also the site icon as far as its identity goes. 
By default, it's gonna take in the entire scope of the site. So what that means is it's gonna have your site pages, it's gonna have your document libraries, everything's included there. The picker does allow you to select uh, sources as well from here. And then the part of the customization that is probably interesting is how do you want people to interact with it? You get to start figuring out and entering what behavior you want for this copilot. This is a fairly important part of the, of the process here if you're trying to convey basically how you expect people to use it, what information that they want. And what's interesting here is that on the right-hand side of this, you can test this copilot before you actually save it and, and make these changes appear for everybody that's coming to use the site. So the space here allows you to have a look at some test um, queries that you could put in as well as different, um, different ways to introduce that copilot. But that's it. Once it's done, I save it and close it, and that will uh, immediately show me how it's going to appear within the SharePoint site. So one of the One of the things that makes this uh, built-in copilot different from just creating a custom copilot is there's going to be some site copilot settings that we want you to be able to set as a site owner. For one, um, like I mentioned, there's going to be one that we give you by default. There's going to be one that you can tell people when they come to the site, this is the one you should use. So we want to give you a setting that lets you choose that. We will build you one automatically uh, as part of the site, but you could, you could pick any other custom copilot that you've created for that site to put into this, um, to put into, to choose for when people come to visit that site. The second thing that you can do is basically choose the copilots that appear for, for the users on that site. If you remember in that switcher, we had a list of copilots that were, that were created from that site. So the site owner can actually choose the ones that they think are going to be the most useful for, for the users and the audience that they're trying to target. Now let's look at the second demo. So this one is going to be looking at selecting um, copilot for, or creating a copilot from a selection of, of um, from a selection of of files. All right. So I'm here in my comms folder, and I'm going to create a custom copilot around some of the, the delivery drone press releases on these sites. Simply select a few files and create a copilot. So this starting screen is really meant to give you a sense of what you're going to be creating. You can see right away you can click try it, and what that'll do is create that copilot, and you can use it right away on that site panel. But I'm going to show you some of that edit, um, edit functionality that we have. So in this case, uh, because it's something that's customized, I think that, that folder name that's put in there by default isn't going to be expressive enough, so I'm going to give it a different name. You can give it a, an identity. So here I'm going to choose a, a new icon to say that this is about the delivery drone. And then we can go to the sources. And I had shown you previously that default to site. And here we've got that pre-selected three uh, files that, we, that I had originally selected to start the copilot. And just so that yeah, I can show you what this browsing looks like, I'm going to select another file and add that to the list as well. And in the same way that we saw in the previous demo, part of this uh, I'm showing a little bit repetitive just to, just to give you a sense that it's the same flow regardless of which entry point that you're actually um, coming from. Oops. Let's put another different text here. And then in the same way that I had shown you, early, you earlier, you can also test it out here um, before you save it and make all your different changes that way. So once that's done, again, you'll hit, I'm going to hit save and um, have that show up again in the window so that you can see what's going to be, what the end user is going to end up seeing when they start using this um, copilot as well. So once we hit save, we can close it, and that'll pull up the window there so it's ready, to, ready for people to use um, with the customizations, customizations that you made. So one of the things that the builder does is actually give you a starting point for your custom copilots. Um, the next set of things that you can do is that you can actually extend this uh, custom copilot that you made that's really just grounded in that SharePoint data into Copilot Studio. And we let you do that because there's so much more that you can get from Copilot Studio as well that isn't that simple click thing. So the target audience here is not necessarily just the every user, but it's somebody that's comfortable using Copilot Studio. We want them to be able to create this much more robust app. 
So you're going to be able to add knowledge that's not in OneDrive and SharePoint uh, through Copilot Studio. You can customize actions, and you can also publish and deploy this app um, to all the places that are supported in Copilot Studio. So for this one, I'm just going to roll um, a video to, to show the, how this is going to work. Microsoft Copilot that can be extended with Copilot Studio? Let's look at another example of how you can extend a Copilot within SharePoint. This SharePoint site has all the event details for a major event, Relicon 2024. The attendees can quickly get information from the Copilot. However, employees looking for food vendor information couldn't get answers from the Copilot due to the information not being available on SharePoint. To fix it, the Copilot can easily be customized via Copilot Studio to connect to external sources. With a simple click, the user is now able to continue editing their Copilot in Copilot Studio's full authoring experience. Relicon's catering vendor information is available as records in Dataverse. From Copilot Studio, it can easily be added as additional knowledge sources. And to give attendees even more menu details, they can also add the catering vendor's public website as another knowledge source. This way, the Copilot can answer any additional meal questions from the attendees. Providing information is great, but the Copilot can take it further by allowing attendees to submit their meal choices ahead of the event. This can be easily done by adding an action in Copilot Studio. In this case, the action updates employees' meal choice as part of the attendee records in Dataverse. There you have it. Now the Copilot will take the action automatically without needing additional configuration. When they're satisfied with the Copilot's additional capabilities, they can easily publish their changes to become available on the Relicon 2024 SharePoint site. <clears throat> so now the last part of this demo that I wanted to show you is what you do after you've created these. So now I've shown you that you can create them from SharePoint, uh, as just a file selection, we've got this built-in one that we're creating. You can extend it to Copilot Studio, and we'll look at how we can share it. So there's the delivery drone site that, that I had created earlier, and it's as simple as grabbing a link to this uh, Copilot to share. So you'll see that this is a familiar dialogue around sharing. Uh, you've probably seen this if you've ever shared a file. You copy that link, and when we drop it into Teams, this is the, the step that you take to just say, hey, I'm working with Mona here. I'm going to give her this co-pilot so that we can add it to our chat, and we can start conversing with it and start learning and using the information we get from this delivery drone uh, custom co-pilot in our flow. So this is all coming into preview this summer. Uh, I've got a registration here that you can nominate you and your company to, to join our private preview and try out these great um, features and also hopefully uh, give us a lot of feedback as you're using it as well so we can make this really awesome. I'm gonna hand it over to Luca for the next section. Thank you, CJ. Wow, this is cool stuff. Hard for us to keep the bar high. Uh, you didn't make easy that for us. Okay, let's switch gears now a little bit and let's focus on how do we bring copilots that can be created using Microsoft Copilot Studio in another application that is powered by SharePoint, which is Viva Connections. So basically, when we start that, uh, where are we? Okay, when we start that, we start in Copilot Studio and in Copilot Studio, we go and create our custom copilots. We can either use the rich set of controls and capabilities that Copilot Studio provides to you, or we can use the um, conversational Copilot experience that Copilot Studio brings to us and basically ask help for the Copilot itself to help us bring, building new custom Copilots. When we are building the custom Copilots, we can leverage the 1,500 and plus connectors that the Microsoft Copilot Studio gives the, uh, the ability for us to use. Those are connectors for Microsoft services, just like Microsoft 365 or SharePoint Dynamics 365, as well as non-Microsoft services, Salesforce, Adobe, Workdays, et cetera. Um, and for customer services, developers can basically build all their own custom connectors by using the power of uh, Power Apps and Visual Studio Code or your favorite IDE. And then when you are building the custom copilot, you are focusing on prompts and you are focusing on the outputs. And in Copilot Studio, one of the things you can do, and you will see that in a second, is that you can leverage the power of Adaptive Card Framework in order to transform the responses in powerful visually interactive cards. 
So once you've done your copilot and you're published your copilot, it's now time for use that in Viva Connections. And we will look at Viva Connection in a second, but basically Viva Connection is an application that you can use in order to bring the information and the content of your company directly to the, end, to the users of your organizations, <laughs> especially in situations where those users are not in front of a desktop, but they are mobile and they are like frontline workers and they need to work with mobile devices. So really Viva Connection is the tool you use in order to bring this information directly to the user so they can do the job done without rambling around and trying to find the right information. From there you have the operator that is the persona that is uh, um, in charge of building the dashboard. And this persona can use sort of a lot of cards to build the experience. One of these cards is called the card designer. And the card designer basically provides the ability to select custom copilots that have been built by using Copilot Studio. From there, the, da the operator can create the dashboard, can target the dashboard in the cards to a specific set of users. You can also have multiple dashboards if your organization is a conglomerate of multiple companies. And then when you're ready, you are able to use the custom copilot in Teams desktop, mobile, or a uh, um, tablet experience. Okay, let's see how it works. Let me switch to my demo machine, and let's be sure that I did my prayers to the demo god in the right way this morning. I think I did good, let's see how it goes. So this is the dashboard in Viva Connections, and you can see that you have a lot of cards here. You can see that I have first party cards, so cards provided by Microsoft, like the tasks card, Viva Learning, Praise. Cards have these capabilities to connect to external application, like the Praise one. Cards has also capability to provide an in-dashboard experience with the card view, and then you click on the card itself, and you have this concept of quick view from where you can fill up information and context. All of these cards, both cards provided by Microsoft and cards built by third-party developers, can be done by using the SharePoint framework, which is a powerful uh, development tool that is based on TypeScript and JavaScript that is able to create cards and is able to connect your data and bring this kind of functionalities on multiple of Microsoft 365 canvases, including, in this case, Viva Connection through what are called cards or adaptive card extensions. So from there, let's see that I am an operator and now I want to add a new card. I click, I go to the edit, I edit my dashboard, from here, I can add a card, and as I can say, I have this card designer card, and I have a lot of other cards here. I have cards from third-party developers as well as cards provided by Microsoft directly. From here, I click the card designer, I edit that, and from the card designer itself, immediately what I can see is that I have a Copilot Studio <laughs> option. When I select in the Copilot Studio option, I will be able to bring my Copilots here and use that in the card designer. Right now, I don't have any of these copilots available, but conveniently, I can click here on this create a copilot, and Microsoft Copilot Studio opens for me. And now, let's see how I can build a copilot using Copilot Studio, and this is where Chris is going to help me with that. Forward, please. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> let's build a copilot, a card-based copilot, uh, using Copilot Studio. Um, so here I am in the home page of the product. Uh, normally, if I were creating a new copilot, I would use a conversational creation experience or perhaps select from one of the templates that we have available. Uh, I'm limited on, limited on time though, so I've already got an existing copilot that's called Stock Assist that I'm going to use and extend um, and kind of describe how it all works. The scenario or the copilot that we're going to build is one around taking um, stock availability for internal employees who maybe want to request new hardware, maybe it's a laptop. Um, you can drill down into details of that particular laptop or computer, and you can request to maybe your IT department uh, some, a new machine to be sent to you. So let's go ahead and build that functionality. I'm going to drop into the stock assist copilot that I have set up. And I see here that I've set up some things. I've set up these things that are called topics and these things that are called actions. There are <coughs> actually a couple ways to send adaptive cards via Copilot Studio. Um, actions are, in this case, are essentially just wrapped REST APIs. Just imagine that it's hitting, well, it is uh, a deployed uh, web endpoint that serves my stock data. And the second API that I have is one that will send a new request with some stock that I'd like to present to a new employee. Uh, when you call an action, you can actually bind its response to be a message. 
and that message itself could be an adaptive card. So right there you can sort of bind a card-based rich media view in response to an action that could be a call to an internal uh, database, it could be Dataverse, it could be Salesforce, and so on. Uh, I'm not gonna do that for this demo though, I'm actually gonna use topics and, because I want to demonstrate how Copilot Studio is really driven off of triggers and events. Um, and uh, what invokes this topic, and a topic is basically structured and controlled dialogue, it's fully programmable. Um, this event that I've configured is basically in response to a card submission, a user clicking a button or perhaps a form submission. When that is triggered, it invokes this flow. And I have a card set up here already, it's welcome to stock assist, that's the name of the co that we're building. Um, and the other topics that we have are around fulfillment, uh, where you want to create a request or drill down or show the products uh, in a list for the user. Let's, in, let's go and implement the topic for uh, servicing the list of products. I've got my event configured. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add one of those actions that I showed earlier through this little action wizard here. I'll search stock assist, the get products endpoint. Find a connection to it. I'm gonna change the authentication mechanism to be Copilot author based, so the maker, is, the maker credential will be used to actually invoke this API, but it can be configured for end user authentication as well. And like I said, it's gonna be calling an API and returning in this case a JSON payload, so I wanna store that somewhere. I'm gonna store that in a variable that the Copilot can reference later on in the flow of the conversation. So I've saved my variable. The last thing I need to do is I need to send the card uh, that has the data from the API back sort of uh, interpolated in it. I select adaptive card. And uh, this is where you could go to the adaptive card designer or perhaps another card designer tool that might support the adaptive card schema. In this case, I have this <coughs> payload in my clipboard that I can paste here. It's declarative. And that should be it. All I need to do at this point is save. I know I implemented my products topic that sends the product list card. I can test it right here. When I start a conversation with the copilot, here's my welcome view. I will click request new order. There's the list uh, of products that I just configured and you'll see that it actually in navigated to the products topic. I'm gonna click on one of these. That navigated me to the product drill down topic. It's gonna to present a new card hitting the other action API that I described. I can muck with the quantity and then click request when I'm satisfied. And that will navigate me to the sort of fulfillment request submitted uh, view uh, that will be experienced in Viva. So I'm happy with that. To get this back to Viva, what we need to do is publish it. Hopefully this only takes a few seconds. Any good jokes in the meantime? <laughs> we're waiting for. There we go. There we go. See, this is a development. We needed run. a little bit of push. <laughs> All right. So it's published, and then once a copilot is published, you can actually enable your copilot to work on many different things that we call channels. A channel could be Microsoft Teams or Slack or Facebook Messenger. Um, in this case, we've added Viva Connections as a new channel type. So all I need to do at this point is to go to the Viva Connections channel tile and click Turn on Viva Connections. When this completes, it'll be discoverable uh, back on Luca's machine where he can then add it into his dashboard. And guess what? Here it is. You can see that now in the car designer, I have the Stock Assist uh, Copilot <coughs> that was built by Chris using uh, Microsoft Copilot Studio. Now here I can see that I have a couple of options as uh, the um, author of my dashboard. The first thing that I see is that, oh, look at that. I have exactly the same adaptive card powered by Copilot that Chris was showing Copilot Studio available here in my dashboard. And now the only thing that I have to do is to craft my card experience so that the end user can use that in the dashboard and interact with the copilot from Viva Connection. So the first thing I'm doing, I'm going to come here and move my size to card size to large so I have a little bit of more real estate if I need that. 
I go to here and I change the title and I use, it, use that as an order management. And then the other thing that I can do as an operator, I can either leave the card in the way it is, so then when I click on the card, I will start interacting with the copilot directly and bring the adaptive card experience from copilot. Or another thing that I can do, I can elevate the sum of the prompts that Chris designed and defined it in the custom copilot in copilot studio before and bring them directly in the card view. In this way, I can basically have the opportunity to uh, promote and elevate some of the critical functionalities that I want my user to uh, interact with directly in the card without having to go and dig deeper in the quick view. For now on, let's keep that in this way. I go back, I go back to description. I take a look at the description text. I probably do something different, just like this one. I feel good about this. Now I can see a preview of how the card looks like, how the quick view will looks like, and I'm going to republish that to my dashboard. I go back to my dashboard, I refresh to be sure that my changes are here, and then I show more, and guess what? This is my card that is available right now. If I said now, let's say that I am an operator, I am an end user, I am on the floor, I am in front of my machine, I click here, and immediately I can see that the copilot replies back to me, but instead of giving me a textual experience or a, an interactive experience via text, it gives me that in kind of interactive experience via adaptive card. I click on request order, and then the next card comes up in the same way that Chris was testing his copilot in Copilot Studio. I can click to an information, I can select the quantity, I can make a request, and I am done. And now I have been able to do everything from here directly and interacting with Copilot in a graphical information. That's pretty cool, right? Did you like it? Come on. Thank you. So the other thing that I want to show is that as a developer, you are building these cards, and these cards are fantastic in Viva Connections. We just discussed all the benefits and how end users can use them. <coughs> But we are in the era of Copilot, and really we believe that Copilot, Microsoft 365 Copilot can bring a lot of value on you. So one of the things that we are also working on is the ability to try to bring the um, investments that you have made in building your cards above and beyond just Viva Connection. So for example, let's say that I am an employee at Real Cloud. I've worked on this delivery drone launch for a long time. I'm super busy, I'm super stressed out, I need to have some kind of uh, days off because I have burnout. So what I could do, I could go to the HR web and I could take a look at the information over there, but uh, one of the things that I can do, I can also ask this question to Copilot, to Microsoft 365 Copilot, and try to get that kind of information back. So what I'm expecting, because my content is grounded inside of my tenancy, I am expecting to get the information from uh, just like a policy document from HR Web. Instead, what I got is a powerful card, the same card we have seen in the dashboard before, directly in Microsoft 365 Copilot. Not only that, when I am in Microsoft 365 Copilot, I can interact directly from the card within the uh, Microsoft 365 Copilot. I can select some information. I can put mental health day, I can basically fill up all of my information and do everything from here without getting uh, um, distracted from a different focus. And this works for um, several amount of cards. This can work with this one. I can have another kind of prompt or question just like asking for my payday. And basically, the dashboard is part of your tenancy and all the content inside of the dashboard is grounded and Copilot, Microsoft 365 Copilot understands about that. It's able to see if there is a card that is able to fulfill the requirements that you have and show that to you. <coughs> so from here, I can go there and do everything else. So this is basically what it is. Very quick recap. So what we have seen here, basically, so from the Microsoft Copilot and Viva Connection integration, you can see that in Copilot Studio, you are able to create a Copilot. Copilot are available in the card designer. You can select them. You can basically get the prompts, make the prompts available in the card to have even a more precise experience. And once you are there, the card information is provided to you by the power of Adaptive Card and Microsoft Copilot Studio. Then those cards can also surface in uh, uh, your Microsoft 365 Copilot directly. 
The copilot understands the card intention because it's grounded in your tenancy. And there are, if there is a card that fulfills a specific need, the card will surface. You do not have to change your cards. If you already have invested in your cards by using SharePoint framework and building your custom cards, these cards will be already available. The copilot will understand that and will bring that information based on the tech content that is already there, text, description, and stuff like that. Moving forward, we will also give the opportunity for developers to even better specify the intent of the card by making some changing in the manifest in order to do that. So I think we are far out from the, fast, from the half of the uh, <coughs> presentation and we didn't do any code. I feel bad about that. Can you bring some coding here, Mark, oh, please? Oh, I sure can, yeah. Fantastic, thank you so much. <laughs> All right, thanks, Luca, and hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Mark Wendell, product manager at Microsoft that we already talked about. Um, yeah, so we saw how you can add custom Copilot using low code, no code uh, to SharePoint experiences. Today, I'm gonna share with you how you can add uh, pro code, custom Copilot to your SharePoint embedded application. So we're gonna go through a few slides, just cover some context and theory, and then we're gonna do some hacking together in Visual Studio Code and take a look at what that looks like and kind of build it together. Before I get into making custom co-pilots for SharePoint Embedded, I wanna give a quick primer on what SharePoint Embedded is if you haven't come across it. Um, so at a high level, SharePoint Embedded is a way for you to embed SharePoint storage capabilities into your custom application, okay? It is a headless set of pay-as-you-go APIs that allows you to create and manage a partition of content in an M365 tenant. So basically you can build custom applications on SharePoint Embedded and that lets you create a custom content partition in an M365 tenant. As an app developer, when you build your app on SharePoint Embedded, you get a whole bunch of capabilities right out of the platform that you don't need to code yourself. So core content management capabilities like permission management, files, and all that stuff that you'd expect from SharePoint that's already kind of built in. You can just use the graph APIs and you get that stuff. And in fact, interacting with content uses the same drive and drive item APIs that you might be used to. You also have the ability to embed office, web and desktop experiences right from your application. So you can have an app that has office documents in it. Users of your application can actually collaborate, co-author, at mention and do all of that stuff that they've come to expect with the office experiences directly in your custom application. It also gives you the ability to have security trim search. So right from in your app, all of the content's automatically indexed when it's stored in SharePoint Embedded. And so you can do like full security aware searching either in your app experiences, or if you enable it, users can discover your app's content from other M365 experiences like OneDrive and SharePoint. So there's a whole bunch of capabilities that you kind of just get as part of the platform when you develop on SharePoint Embedded. Now, if I am a tenant admin and somebody's installing an app on my tenant that is built on top of SharePoint Embedded, I get a whole bunch of benefits as well. Because when we use that app as my organization, that app's content is actually gonna be stored inside my tenant. It's stored inside my tenant. So I have a custom app that's actually storing content inside my tenant in a dedicated partition for that for that app. So I don't need to give permissions to that app to access SharePoint or OneDrive. It can just access that content. And more importantly, because it's located in my tenant, I get all of the built-in M365 security compliance and business continuity promises for free from the platform. The app developer doesn't need to build them, and I can feel confident because the app's built on SharePoint Embedded that I can get those capabilities and have the security and compliance promises of my organization honored like e-discovery, audit, DLP, all on, that, all on that custom data. So SharePoint Embedded just went into general availability this week. We just announced it a couple days ago. If you want to check it out, you can go to that ak.ms slash start dash SPE link. That's for SharePoint Embedded. The thing I want to talk about today, though, is how SharePoint Embedded content is not just search ready, but it's also co-pilot ready. And that's the thing that we're announcing uh, private preview as well this week. So. I talked about how all content in SharePoint Embedded, so if you put a file in a custom app and it's stored in SharePoint Embedded, it actually gets fed into the lexical search index that M365 uses. But those files also get put into the semantic index, the same one that Microsoft 365 Copilot uses. And so content is automatically added 
in there and vector embeddings are generated. And it's not just making that content AI ready, super important part, but you know, if you're using a different store, you could probably find a way to do that yourself, you know, generate vector embeddings on that content and without too much difficulty. But the real value proposition by using the same semantic index that's built in Microsoft 365 is that all of the security descriptors and all of the security requirements of your organization continue to be honored. So if you have information barriers, permissions are honored and stuff like that. So like all of that stuff just works by default. The two key things, the two key takeaways here, if you have a custom app that's written on SharePoint Embedded, stores content in there, you can access that content through Microsoft 365 Copilot. Now that can be turned on and off based on your app settings, but if you turn it on, users of your app can actually access, reason over, summarize the content that is in your custom application in Microsoft 365 Copilot. And the thing that we're announcing today is that you can have a pro dev custom Copilot dropped into your SharePoint embedded application. That's what it looks like. Um, so this is a, this is a kind of a mock-up screen of a custom co uh, of a of a SharePoint embedded sample application with a custom Copilot. And so here it's um, we're calling it the HR Smart. So it's an HR recruiting app, and it's a good fit for an app that should be built on SharePoint embedded. There's a lot of files and content in here, so you might have job descriptions, resumes that are uploaded by candidates, um, interview feedback, offer letters, and more. Right. So there's a lot of files and content associated with that makes it a good fit for SharePoint Embedded. But the thing that we're gonna talk about today is this custom Copilot that is on the right-hand side. What we're, what we're going into private preview with and what we're announcing is the ability to drop that custom Copilot into your application and is either a React component and an underlying JavaScript API that you can actually control the experiences of. So this is super powerful. If you think about a custom application like this, you get to manage the experience of that co-pilot dynamically based on the user that's visiting that site or page, what page they're on, what items they've selected, what the actual identity of your particular custom co-pilot should be. Using the rich set of APIs, you can control all of that stuff. And that's what we're gonna look at and that's what we're gonna build together here. Before I get hands on, just a quick plug for this. If that all sounds interesting to you, I recommend either take a picture or visit that link, aka.ms slash SPE Copilot, to sign up your organization for our private preview. And now I'm going to try and switch over to my demo machine. Cool. All right. So that same screenshot that we were looking at, this is kind of like a live version of that demo application running on my local developer machine here. And this is all live, so you know, cross your fingers. Hopefully, the demo gods are in my favor as well. Um, but yeah, so we're looking at an HR recruiting app, and I'm on the jobs page, right? And so, like, we're looking at a few different job descriptions in here. Now, each one of those, if you're familiar with SharePoint Embedded already, and kind of the object model or information architecture there, SharePoint Embedded has these things, this concept called file storage containers that you can create inside of a tenant. So each of these job descriptions is a file storage container within my tenant. And that's a good place to store like this job posting document, for example, or the resumes of candidates that apply, or I can send out offer letters or what have you. So I just clicked on one of those job posting documents and just to show you how office experiences are built right into SharePoint Embedded. So nothing to do with Copilot yet, but you can access and open Word documents either in online or in web and collaborate co-author app mention directly from the SharePoint Embedded application. And I don't need, as this user, I don't need to even have uh, a license for SharePoint or M365 or any of this because it is a set of pay-as-you-go APIs that are underlying this. So that's what this app is. There's a giant open empty space on the right. That's where we want to drop our custom Copilot in. So I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code and right now I've got an empty React component. If you're not familiar with React, not a big deal. It's just a, a nice way of building web experiences. So I've already got it imported. Now I'm going to add my chat embedded widget or React Components, the proper name for it. So I've included that. Now the compiler is complaining at me, chat embedded. I'm missing an auth provider. So I have to provide an auth provider property to this component. So I'm going to go make one of those. The auth provider itself is not complicated. 
All it does is it has a method called get token, and that lets me get a token for my particular SharePoint embedded application for the current user. It's a delegated token. Okay, so now I'm gonna actually use this auth provider, I have to instantiate it, and then I'm gonna set it in my React state. Okay, cool. So we have an auth provider, and now I'm gonna pass it as a property to this React component. Okay, and there's one more thing. For the keenly uh, visible stuff out there, you can see that auth provider could be undefined. So I just need to be careful here and say, make sure that it is defined before I actually load my component. Okay, cool. No more errors. We have dropped the component in. In roughly a minute or so, I'm gonna go back and we now have a custom copilot embedded in our SharePoint embedded application. Okay, this thing is already grounded on the content in my SharePoint embedded application. So if I have, for example, here, I have these job postings. So I can say, show me recent job postings. And fingers crossed, hopefully this works. And what that's going to do is show me the job postings that are in this particular SharePoint embedded application. So, and it's streaming, that, streaming those answers back. By default, it's going to show me all three that are in there. And of course, we're getting this familiar Copilot experience that you've come to expect, so I have references there for those documents that you can see on the left. That's awesome. We also have the ability to interact with the working set. So if you're familiar with that, I can have the slash here, and that'll show me you know, some of the working set of the people that I've been working with. I can also use that to reference a particular file that is in my custom application stored in SharePoint Embedded and ask it to summarize that file. So really powerful stuff. We have the ability to just, in less than a minute, drop a custom copilot into our app. But it's not very custom yet. It is operating on my app's data, but I wanna change some things with it. Number one, the red in there is not really fitting with my theme. The header or the title of this custom copilot doesn't match my Contoso HR app. And I wanna be able to add some custom prompts and things like that to it. So, I'm gonna go back into Visual Studio Code and I am going to add some properties here, chat config, and I will give it a header, which is just, um, I'm loading these from you know, a pre-populated singleton object that I've got in the background. It's nothing to do with what we're gonna show in private preview, but it's just, I've got, you know, for example, a header says, you can see it there in the IntelliSense Contoso HR chat, and then a theme just has a bunch of colors to try to uh, make it look a little bit more fitting for my application. I have to pass that chat configuration as a property to my React component. Okay, there we go. Once I do that, hot reload, looking better. We got some blue here, and I can say, um, you know, the same types of things that I have, but now I wanna actually add zero query prompts and suggested prompts. And I'm actually gonna have a little bit of fun and show a pirate prompt. So the point here, once I save this and go back, it's gonna reload. You'll be able to see, so there are these zero query prompts. I can click on them. I can kind of customize how they show up. And I've got these uh, suggested prompts as well. And I've also told this thing to respond like a pirate. Now you probably don't want to do that in your actual application, but I'm doing it just to illustrate the fact that you have full control of the meta prompt here, and you can really give this custom copilot an identity, right? So it says, ahoy there, Mark, here be the summaries of the, re yeah, and so on. So you really get to tune the experience of it. This does not have to be statically defined. You can go through and update these experiences, these suggested prompts, zero query prompts, and the meta prompt as you go through your application, depending on the context of it, right? So if your user's looking at a particular job or maybe looking at hiring policies or things like that, or even just managing users, you can set this context dynamically as your application, um, as the user goes through your application. So we probably don't want that pirate meta prompt for real. I will actually just set it to an actual meta prompt. And then in there, this is just kind of further showing I'm telling, I'm telling it that is a digital assistant for a human resources hiring application. I'm giving an identity. I'm educating that virtual assistant 
on our hiring values. So now when I go back and that refreshes, if I use one of these uh, zero query prompts and say, what are our hiring values? That's gonna come back and use the meta prompt that I gave it to give it effectively the instruction of what our values are, and it's able to relay that back to me. Now you can also add all kinds of context, like what the user's role is in here, um, maybe who their particular hiring manager is, or anything like that. So there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do to customize that runtime in the context of your app, um, what, what the experience is. And there's one more thing. I'll say just like, if I want to look at um, a particular, say, job posting. So I've clicked on this. If I, if I look right now and say, show me recent job postings, what I wish it would do is actually honor the fact that in the context of this app, I have selected a particular job posting. And maybe I was viewing it and, and looking on a different page, but what I wanted to do is like dynamically alter the data source scope that I have in my application to that custom copilot. And that's exactly what I can do here. So I clicked on it, it's showing me all of the job descriptions, but what I'm able to do actually is to build a custom handler here that's really just gonna give me a handle to the underlying custom copilot API. And then I can get the data sources that are selected elsewhere in my app and set that data source on the API. And I just need to do one more thing to make sure it's all plumbed up. I'll save that. And I do think I need to refresh the page because it won't hot reload because it's not updating React state. But once that's done, now when I go into and I click a particular software engineering position, I can say list and summarize recent job postings and it is going to scope the response back to that particular job posting that I clicked. Underneath the hood is a file storage container and it's going to only look in that file storage container because that's what I told it to scope. So, Pretty powerful stuff. You can really customize your co-pilot experiences in your SharePoint embedded apps with that capability. That's it for that demo. And in fact, I think that's it for our talk. We are a few seconds over. One final plug here. If any of this stuff is interesting to you, you can go to those links to sign up for the two private preview programs that we talked about today. Thank you very much for coming. I really appreciate it. Thank you, folks. Thank you.